Hello, gentle viewers. This is Avindian, welcoming you to a new episode of Out of the Park Baseball 20, where the Milwaukee Brewers won 110 games and still lost in the World Series to the Montreal Expos. So it's not the most depressing thing, but it is still kind of depressing. Uh, we've been managing for 10 years now, in this version of the game anyway, and we've put up an 8-16 and 8-04 record and two playoff appearances, but zero championships. And we have to manage championships, because that's what we're here for. Specifically, a championship. So let's do our quite common is this record of success sustainable? And I'm going to tell you flat out, the answer is probably no. I highly doubt we're going to get to 110 wins again. But that doesn't mean we can't have an awesome season. Starting off with, my goodness, Oscar Gamble. <clears throat> Just playing out of his bloody mind. Um, apart from 1974, 1978 was his best year. Which is great. But of all the record, of all the players that did well this year, I think his success is the least sustainable. Because you'll notice his gap power starting to slip. But we'll look at his scouting charts. He's starting to trend slightly in the wrong direction. His eyes improving a bit, but his contact is dipping. Uh, as is his power. And he is 28. So he's at that age where we typically expect, okay, this offensive player has peaked and we'll probably never see him um, dominate again, which is fine. That's entirely his prerogative. But we'd be foolish to count on this level of production from him again. It would be great if we got it, but I don't expect it. Also a damn fine year in right field too. Hmm. Uh, Carlton Fisk also exploded this year in the good way, not in the bad way. Setting a career high in home runs. Um, just a career high in slugging percentage. Uh, not a career high in on base. That could be better. And certainly not a career high in batting average. But he really crushed the crap out of the ball this year. And again, I found myself questioning, is this level of performance sustainable? Because Fisk has been hard for us to predict because his numbers are all over the place. And to be frank, I'd rather have 1975 Fisk than 1978 Fisk. Because I prefer a player who gets on base consistently and has power versus someone who has power and gets on base less consistently. Although it's hard to go wrong with either model, particularly when he continues to provide pretty good defense. I don't know why he ended up at first base. Please never put him there again. Um, Wayne Gross, oh God, this is going to be a bad year, isn't it? I keep seeing players have huge spikes in their production without much of an explanation for it. Um... Yeah, Wayne Gross just did everything better than he did the year before. He had more power, more on base percentage, fewer home runs, actually. So that's kind of encouraging. Uh, another pretty good year for his base. I'm finally curious why his war is so much higher. Just because he had a few extra doubles? Oh, he cut his strikeout rate quite dramatically. Let's look at the advanced stats for that. Yeah, he. this is the lowest strikeout rate of his career and the highest BABIP. We probably can't count on him repeating that. So, you know what? I've given up on Chris Byer. I genuinely don't know how he keeps doing this year in and year out. He's not a dominating hitter by any stretch of the imagination, but he's good at it. And he continues to play, you know, pretty great shortstop. I mean, I know we were, I know, excuse me, I should say, I was pretty concerned about drafting him, but 
so far it seemed like it's been worth it. Um, I will note, look at his overall offensive production is starting to tail off, and he is 28. Um, now, because he's great at getting on base, he's got a good chance to maintain some level of production, even into his 30s. But we really do want to start looking for a shortstop that could eventually replace him, even if he can't do it right now. Um, Ted Sizemore, again, played. This is the first year he was above average offensively. There was something in the water this year in Milwaukee. And I'm going to predict right now, I think we're going to be in for a bit of a world of hurt. Elliot Maddox has been consistently frustrating to me more than any player that we've imported the last couple of years because this is someone with a consistent offensive track record who just hasn't done it since he got to Milwaukee. He would regularly hit high batting average. He's only done that one year for us. Uh, he would get on base a bit, and he's done that part. At least he's kept that end of the bargain. But it seems like what's really tapered off has been his defense. He used to be otherworldly, and now he's not. I would like to move on from Maddox, but again, we probably pushed all our chips in a little bit too soon when we signed Maddox and Gamble. I probably should have picked one or the other. But I didn't. Uh, and apparently he's a dick. Is that really true? Yeah, he is kind of a jackass. Um, hmm. Well, we can always move on from him at some point. Yeah, his defense is starting to slip. But the current charisma is ecstatic because they won 110 games. And winning fixes a lot of problems. All right. Uh, Terry Poole is one of the ones I think we can still expect more from. His offensive capability suggests someone who should be able to provide consistent above average offense, even if he's never going to hit many homers. Uh, he was decent last year, but we need to see his plate discipline go up, and especially we need to see his power get back to where it was. Of all the players we have, I think Poole is the clear is, is the most prepared for an improvement. And then Kevin Bell, he's whatever. Um, a ringing endorsement, that is not. But he is indeed whatever. He filled incapably, and I'm not sorry that he played for us. So I can think of two players we could expect some level of rebound from. Elliot Maddox, maybe he finally hits well one year. And Terry Poole. Uh, Gamble, Fisk, and Gross are almost certainly going to be worse this year. And Chris Byers always seem to be primarily driven by his defense and just hitting enough to carry his glove. So maybe he'd be okay. And then Ted Sizemore, he's 33. We were several years away from his last four win season. I genuinely don't expect him to provide much production going forward. So there's a lot of room for a letdown in the offense next year. And so that's something we're going to have to be proactive about in the offseason. Pitching. First of all, J.R. Richard was our big free agent signing. And he lived up to expectations. He over lived up to expectations, leading the league in whip, um, 209 strikeouts, 65 walks, only allowed 12 homers, he kept it in the park, he w led the league in wins, he's a Cy Young candidate, that's what I brought him in to be. Bert Hooten, also spent a fair bit of money on, uh, basically pitched a standard Bert Hooten year, which to be frank is exactly what we needed. I brought him in to be consistent, and consistent is exactly what he was. Solid ERA, good amount of wins, uh, more strikeouts than walks. That's always something you want to see in a pitcher. Home run rate did tick up a little bit. 
Uh, he's a ground ball pitcher. This is a bit concerning, and hopefully he fixes it. Uh, Ken Holtzman, who we acquired before the trading deadline, provided a nice spark at the end of the season. But here's our biggest issue last year. Our two homegrown pitchers had arguably the worst years, as Mike Caldwell and Burt Blylevin were just slightly above replacement level. Uh, Terry Forster remains amazing, as does uh, John D'Aquisito. But yeah. Oh, by the way, we have to re-sign Bainey because reasons. So we'll do that when we can, I guess. But... Our team's biggest weakness right now, and a couple of you addressed this in the comments to videos a couple weeks ago, we don't have very much in the way of homegrown starting pitching. Our three best pitchers are all imports. And this is where we could be in for a world of hurt, unless we can start to address that this season. Um... So that's, in any case, how we did last year. I think we'll make the playoffs again next year. At least that's my hope. I think even if we regress significantly, we should still win more than 90 games. But a lot will depend on how we manage the team going forward. Let's talk arbitration. Um, I would like to lock up. No, don't do that. Oh, shit. He's going to be so pissed at me. I did that by mistake. I'm sorry. He's going to be mad at me. Um, I have no problem with Dettori. In fact, I'll just go ahead and give him his extension. He's not the worst. I would like to lock up Gross. And he wants to be locked up. Here's my issue, though. He's 26. And at least in terms of contact, he's punching way above his weight. We should expect maybe 77, probably 76. He is punching above his weight when it comes to hitting for average. The rest of his tools are amazing. And that, like, his power is genuinely sustainable. His ability to take walks is genuinely sustainable. But his ability to make consistent contact doesn't seem to be sustainable. So. I'm going to give him a one-year deal. I am not going to overpay him and get locked up to him. I'm going to offer you $154,000, which is your uh, arbitration estimate. I appreciate your loyalty, but I'm not convinced it would be smart to lock you up for a long period of time until I've had at least one more year's worth of data. Again, 1977 Wayne Gross is someone I'm going to I'm going to want on my team. Even 76 Wayne Gross is pretty handy, but I think banking on 78 Gross returning is a pretty bad bet. Um Lise May, Sudeikis can all leave. Frank Fernandez, we can do better. Do we want to bring back Ken Holtzman? <laughs> Last year, he provided about three war. His problem is he doesn't strike many people out. And he's 32. First of all, what does he want to come back? He doesn't want very much. He basically wants three more years at this salary. And Holton's track record, as you can see here over the past year, is all over the place. It's hard to predict what we're going to get. But... His ceiling is still relatively high compared to our other pitchers. He's still durable. He still throws for more than 200 innings a year. 
But I'd have to think something like that isn't that valuable and isn't something we couldn't find somewhere else. So I'm going to say no to re-signing Holtzman and see if we can do a bit of work in the front office. We've got about a million dollars to spend. Um, so if there is a big upgrade available, we should be players for it. Uh, the owner wants us to get a better third baseman. I agree. That would be nice. I can't extend Dick Bainey yet, and we want a hometown player. I'm not going to bother with that one. If we get one, we get one. If we don't, I don't care. All right. So let's get up to the arbitration hearings. Yeah, that's fair. Sorry, John. I did that by mistake. Can I lock you up for a few years if I say step it up by like 50 grand each year? Because here's the thing. You're a really talented reliever, and I would very much like to have you on my team for a long time to come. And you're not that expensive. He'll take it. Perfect. And I think he'll be worth every penny of that. I think that's an easy decision to make. That's a layup. Uh, the fans actually quite like Wayne Gross. Um, oh, dear. We might want to consider signing him a bit longer term. But I don't want to carry a millstone just because people like him. And he could well end up being a, a millstone by the end of that contract. <laughs> Candy Cummings, allegedly the inventor of the curveball. Really? You give the AL Manager of the Year award? Oh, wait a minute. That's my dude, isn't it? I completely forgot about Bill Buckner. I absolutely forgot he even played for this team. Wow. And we have Les Kane. Let's take him off the injured list. Buckner's had a bad time of it since he took his injury hit. And the fact is we don't really need him anymore. Our current outfield is pretty solid. I mean, Poole can do what Buckner does pretty easily. Gamble's got power. There's no way Buckner can handle center. This is selling the lowest of the low, but I think we do have to sell. Because I don't think I'm going to get much else for him. I think his value is only going to drop. So I would like to get just a huge range of offers. And I'll just pick and choose what seems like the best fit. We could use a new DH, um, that's for sure. Okay, we could bring in Joe Ferguson, but I don't need a starting catcher. I could bring in Larry Anderson. He of, I got traded for Jeff Bagwell. I don't really need a bullpen guy that bad, though. I could acquire Glenn Borgman, who at least would be a competent backup catcher. Uh, you keep trying to sell me on Frank Duffy game. I don't think I'm sold. We could acquire Bill Singer, who, but he is on the wrong end of 30. Um, could bring in Bobby Bonds. I'm not sure he's a good fit. Charlie Moore's a pretty solid hitter if he's not a great catcher, but his track record the last couple of years hasn't been great. Um, I could bring in a potentially brilliant relief pitcher. It seems like every year I'm just bringing in relief pitchers. It seems like that's the one thing I could bring back AC, but that ain't happening. He can't hit anymore. If he ever could. And there's Roy J. Thomas. Okay. I'm going to drop the veterans part. I'm going to drop the regulars too. I want to just look at prospects for right now. Uh, 
Okay. Like, here's the thing. If we... If, if we look at his track record, he's gotten his brains hammered every year he's played in the minors. He gives up way too many home runs. He doesn't strike enough people out. Now, our scout thinks we can improve on that. He thinks if we give Anderson some time, he'll improve his stuff. But he's already 25. And frankly, that significantly reduces the chances that he is indeed going to achieve his potential. Compared to a guy like, say, Tom Hume. Tom Hume has a minor league track record, and I know he's not a strikeout guy, but he still manages to get people out, and he's got really good control, really good movement. He'd be a nice back end of the bullpen kind of guy. Who are the other top-notch relievers? Uh, Don's honestly probably my favorite pitcher of this group. He's also the youngest at 24. Um, his, his last season wasn't a great one for him. But he improved in peripherals. Looks like he just maybe got his bell rung a bit more often in terms of the homer. Anderson is so raw. And we're a team that's competing for championships, potentially. So I think we have to drop Anderson. I think he cannot be our choice. Which is with Tom Hume. Which also involves giving Bill Buckner to the Boston Red Sox. Which, you know, is definitely a thing. Um, yeah, you know what? For the memes, I'm going to trade him to the, to the Red Sox. Oh, um, I just want to make sure my GM is saying this is reasonable, and he says it is. Um, I could go for Lurie Wisenton and see if they'd throw him in. But to be honest, he seems very much like a DH kind of guy whose value is going to be tied up in his ability to hit doubles. I could give it a try. Nah, he wants more. I'll, I'll just take this deal straight up. Boom. Done. Sorry, Buckner. You weren't very good. A gold glove for Carlton Fisk. Not for Chris Speyer, but that's alright. Robin Yount's pretty good too. Uh, Forster. Yes. Uh, Silver Slugger. We got Fisk. Gross. Not Gamble, curiously. But still two of them, though. Uh, Cy Young for J.R. Richard, also unanimous. And then there's the trade of Bill Buckner. So that's fun. Um, I will put him on the 40-man. Oh, God, my 40-man's getting full. We're going to need to clean some house before we go any farther. 40-man, uh, and then I'm going to have you start in triple A. All right. Time to clean out the 40, man. So right away, anyone who is objectively... Okay, we're actually going to lose some of these guys when they file for free agency. So let's wait. Uh, we shall indeed wait. This too shall come to pass. And we have no arbitration filings. Here we go. Wow, this is a bad year for free agency. This is an objectively bad year for free agency. Oh, dear. Okay. That's fine. Everything's fine. All right. Step one. Now let's check our 40-man roster and see if there's anyone... We're down to 35. We still need to clear names off this list. Okay. All right. Travers, Rule. Y'all are both getting designated for assignment. Eddie... You gone. Lay. Lover. Scott. 
Wagner. Eh, I don't have enough middle infielders on the roster. I probably have way too many outfielders, but I think this is going to help a lot, actually. So we're going to go to wave and designate for assignment. That frees up the 40 man. I feel better now. We could have a scary good rotation, though, if Les Kane can recapture some of his former glory. So let's go to free agency. We've got about 1.5 million. And there's not a lot here that I'm looking at that I definitely say I want that. Um, Dave Goltz is not worth $800,000 a year. He's not. This is a very specific kind of pitcher who has certain qualities that I find very appealing, but he is ridiculously overpaid at 800 grand. Ridiculously. This is not a million dollar arm. This is a very smart pitcher. A pitcher who throws a ton of innings and who typically keeps the ball in the ballpark. And those are all wonderful things. Those are all genuinely good things to have in a pitcher. But it's not a million dollar arm. I am not paying him that much money. I'm flat out refusing. Rick Rushell. Again, same kind of pitcher. This is not the kind of person you're, you should sell out your team for. Although I do acknowledge <clears throat> he's had a pretty great career. I don't think there's any disputing that. But again, not worth the ridiculous sums they're asking for. All right, Vaughn Joshua. Pretty capable hitter, but he's at a position we've already got fairly strong at. And he had back-to-back -back years of injuries. This is a bad player to take a free agency risk on. Moving on. Steve Busby, again, no. Wildly overvalued. John Lowenstein, can't actually play a position... Don't need relievers. Tom Bradley. Tom Bradley is a man who needs a place to rehab his career. He's 31. A fairly good strikeout pitcher who has some control issues. And up until... 1975 was among, was a fairly, actually, 74 was the last year that was good. Ah, so he's extremely injury prone, at least until last year. Busby might be the kind of guy we'd want to spend on, but I think we want to go even cheaper. What just happened here? Here he is. I think we want to go, or not Busby, uh, Bradley. I think we want to go even cheaper. Because what we need is we need a sixth starter, basically. Someone to stash in AAA. Mar Rettenland. Good on base percentage. Some power. Otherwise, not great. We remain perpetually in need of a quality third baseman. Um, that is undisputed. But we also need a really good DH. Because Gil Flores is not a good DH. This is another potential area of growth. So we see a really great hitter, regardless of position, we can still sign it. The thing is, Joshua's an okay hitter. Right, let's start by sorting through the batters. Let's look for a new DH. Gene Kleins. Outstanding contact, reasonably good gap power, fairly okay at getting on base. Until last year, a pretty consistent track record of offensive success. That's okay. But I did like someone who's got a bit more balanced skill set. Billy Canigliaro. Decent power. Not much in the way of drawing walks. That is problematic. And he slugged quite well, but again, we can afford to be choosy. Richie Hebner, the third baseman who can't play third base, but nonetheless features a fair bit of offensive talent. 
but also had a pretty objectively terrible year a couple years ago. Pass. You know what? I think I know exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait. Um, are any of you guys good backups? Kurt Blaferry might be. And he could get some DH bats in. Um, I honestly think we're going to wait. I don't see any point right now in spending on any of these free agents. Um, let's look at starting pitchers, please. Mike Kakich, come on down. Okay, you don't like my manager. Well, that's fine. He doesn't like you either. How about you, Randy Jones? Perfect. I'm not trying to be cheap. I'm just saying, I'm looking at this market. This is a weak-ass market. And it's only going to get better after the draft. So yeah, let some other idiot pay Dave Goltz a million dollars a year uh, in the twilight of his career. I will happily take those odds. But we do need to get a... We do have to get a useful first round pick. Oh no. Don't take my crappy relievers. No. Atlanta, you've won yourselves a championship. I'm sure. Give me Mickey Scott. He's all we've ever wanted and more. Like, really, mate? Really? All right, all you jerks cleared waivers, as I suspected you might. I'm going to send all your asses to triple A. I'm going to take you off of waivers. There we go. Done. All right, first of all, There's a lot of good pitchers in this draft, and I frankly don't expect any of them to get anywhere near me. You got your Dave Steves, your John Tudors, your Mike Scotts. Not if you can do the Michael Scott, the manager of Muffer Dedlin. Dunder Mifflin, God, what's wrong with me? Mike Scott pitched for the Astros for years, for a few years, and he was quite good at it. Look at that, 1986. Mmm. That's tasty. Okay. New York will give me John Wolford, a not great hitter, for a not great pitcher. And the answer to that, my friends, is no. But. I can't imagine the return for either Caldwell or Blylock will be great. Should we choose to trade them? But I mean, Blylock hasn't been very good, which is a real shame. Um, I have to say, he's been a bit of a bust for us, and that yeah, he usually pitches a few innings, but he's never been great at it. I think the time has come to cut ties with Burt Blylevin. Or maybe keep him in the pen. Um, yeah, his control's never developed. Ever. Um, which is unlike him because the real Burt Blylevin had quite good control. Uh, only 1,300 walks or 3,700 strikeouts. Yeah, our Burt Blylevin just never worked out. Which is kind of a shame, but it's, you know, it's the truth. This Burt Bly Levin, clear Hall of Famer. No disputing it. This Burt Bly Levin probably doesn't even make it to the ballot. That's life. I'm not opposed to trading Burt Bly Levin. What I'm opposed to doing is trading him for what I think our return would probably be, which would either be a reliever or a mediocre hitter. Um... 
he still has enough value as a pitcher that I'd rather just keep him on the team for now. But if I do get a better offer, I might consider it. Hall of Fame voting. Louis Aparicio, not in this timeline. I get that he is a good defensive player, and he's got the whole, he was one of the best early Venezuelan shortstops, but the dude couldn't hit in this timeline. I think the real Louis Aparicio was a much better hitter. Actually, not really. A 653 OPS is pretty shit. Although, admittedly, he was a great shortstop. So maybe that offsets it a bit. In any case, I'm not going to be voting for him. Um, quickly run down the list. I'm going to keep voting for Bob Friend. Apparently, no one wants to vote for him because of his losing record. I think he deserves it. I'll toss in a vote for... Burt Gibson, Hank, Frank Howard, nah. Harmon Killebrew, yes. He's not quite the no doubt about a Hall of Famer he was in real life because he didn't hit nearly as many homers, but he's reasonably good. Oh, Mickey Mantle, you're damn right. Okay, I admit Mickey Mantle was before my time in baseball. Did literally anyone ever call him the Commerce Comet? I've never heard that nickname for him, ever. I always heard of him referred to as The Mick and a bunch of other stuff. I find this a highly dubious thing, but sure. Bill Mazeroski, absolutely not. No. Um... I know that this may be controversial. I know there was a one guy on the channel who was quite a big fan of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Bill Mazeroski was maybe one of the very best second basemen defensively, but the dude couldn't hit his way out of a paper sack. So I'm going to have to say no to Bill Mazeroski. He's widely considered, by the way, to be one of the worst Hall of Famers in the Hall of Fame. I mean, look at these stats. They're just not very good. He never hit better than 283. He had no ability to draw walks. He had virtually no power. I understand you might want to give, uh, pick someone because he was a, a really good fielder. And maybe that's true for Bill Mazeroski. I never had the pleasure to see him play. Maybe he's a much better defender than I think he is. But even under over, otherworldly defenders have to have some level of offensive contribution, and Mazeroski just didn't have them. So, no Hall of Fame for you, my friend. At least not as far as I'm concerned. And then again, we've got a lot of these fairly good pitchers, but no one here that really is outstanding. So, I feel pretty good about Mickey Mantle making it, though. I don't know what it is about him. Just seems like he's pretty good at that baseball stuff. All right, let's check the trade block. Um, is anyone looking to get rid of someone that we might want? I mean, there's Wayne Garrett, who already played for us once and wasn't impressive when he did. There's Art Howe, who can't hit. Yeah, there's, I mean... I see nothing here that would significantly improve our team. Maybe Ron LaFleur. But then he's just a contact hitter. This is a bad offseason to acquire talent. We're going to have to be creative about how we improve our team. Because there's just nothing here. And as badly as we need to upgrade our... Um, hey, people like Randy Jones. That's pretty cool. Randy, I'm going to put you on the... Uh, I'm going to just immediately promote you to the main roster. Done. Um, do we have any hitters... Um, who might be eligible to be a decent DH? Not really. 
Benedict will probably start the year as our backup catcher. Unless we pick someone out of the blue to, to take over for that role this year. Like grab maybe like one more one year kind of guy. But yeah, there's there's not a lot here to suggest that we can improve measurably on uh, on any of our current hitters. Plus, I could just play Ayala at DH. Ayala's actually not bad. I don't know why they're making Flora as a DH. That's pretty stupid. I'm going to trade Gil Flores for a very important reason. It seems like the manager is kind of a boner for him. And uh, I don't think he's that great. That's one of the things I actually kind of like about OOTP is your manager just gets a bug up his butt about certain players and he'll play them even if they suck, which is very true to real life. Um, speaking of Terry Francona this year, who would, who keeps playing Jason Kipnis in the, the cleanup spot, um, which is just level of, of not very brightness. I love Terry Francona. That particular thing is kind of like... Mm, Maybe not. Man, people really want to get themselves some Gil Flores. All right. So, Milt May. I would honestly make this trade just for Milt May. Just to get ourselves a quality backup catcher. You can't hit. You can play center really well. You just can't hit. You can't really hit. I could get Bill Buckner back. Absolutely not. Um, you have power, but that's it. I've already got Ayala who does that. No. Oh, hello, Pete Redfern. Why are you not a starting pitcher? I did say we needed more talent. Could I get Redfern and uh, get you to throw in someone else? Like Gary Matthews Sr. We're going to try. I'm going to try to get Matthew Sr. I'm going to try to get uh, Redfern. He wants a little bit more, which I might be willing to give him. Uh, you want my objectively terrible set shortstop who plays defense kind of good and is an otherwise an awful awful player i think i like this deal quite a lot but we're going to try to do even better eh, you don't have much in the way of interesting prospects I could grab Larry Anderson. I'm just kidding. I'm not going to take Larry Anderson. You wouldn't give me Keith Hernandez, which is totally fine. And I wouldn't expect you to anyway. Um, just for the lulls, go ahead and spit in my face. Oh, you just drafted Bob Welch. Okay. Well, that's that idea shot down. Um... I mean, Dave Rader wouldn't be a terrible choice. And he's only going to be around for one more year. And I just need him to be a competent backup catcher. Would you throw in Dave Rader? No, you really love Dave Rader. Okay, fine. How about Ed Hermon? He'll think about it. You know what? That's fine. I will submit the deal and we'll see how you decide. Done. So, I just want to I just want to emphasize what we've just acquired in exchange for an outfielder who's a mediocre hitter but can't really play center that well. It's not that Flores is a bad player. It's that he doesn't have role in my offense and he's playing being played in a position that doesn't make sense for him. We're getting uh, a massive upgrade, basically a better version of him that can play DH real smooth for us. Uh, we got a guy who should be a starter. 
Um, and we're getting a very competent backup catcher. I think this is a wonderful idea. Do the trade. And people are really happy about Gary Matthew Sr. Which is great. Now, I will completely and utterly acknowledge um, Matthew Sr. should never be touching the field. But he's such a good hitter that I'm willing to basically see if he can crank out a 77 or virtually any of his past years besides 1973. I think he'd be, I think he's an excellent addition to the team. And we didn't pay anything for him. Not really. Um, I do want to try to grab a utility infielder. Uh, well, you know, we might find one in the draft. So I'm just going to go ahead and just sim up to the draft. Now watch our first rounder is someone that's actually just an amazing hitter. Oh, damn. You guys buried the lead in the first one. Two of the greatest leadoff hitters that ever played Major League Baseball. And that's not the first two people on your list? I mean, Ricky Henderson is Ricky Henderson. I'd love to get John Castino. I have absolutely not one iota of any any delusions that he will fall to basically the last pick in the first round. If I got him, I wouldn't do a flip because that would probably fracture my back, but I'd very strongly consider it. Hey, Kansas City actually got it. So I'm not the very worst. I'm just almost the very worst. Um, yeah, there's no way I'm getting that player. There's just none. Okay, you know what? OSA, go home. You're drunk. I'm trusting my scout, not yours. I'm not going to torch myself. Let's just zip right up to where I actually get to make a pick. All right. So we got a bunch of relief pitchers, which isn't exciting. We've got Tom Brookins, who has a bit of talent in the infield. Uh, Rick Matula. Matula's a risk. He's already 25, and he doesn't throw very hard. Now... Matula is the kind of person I'd take in the second round for a very important reason. He's already six foot tall. If he puts on a little bit of muscle and his velocity increases, he could very quickly turn into an amazing pitcher. Um, ugh. Yeah, this draft is very, very top heavy, as they tend to be. If I did switch back to what OSA thinks I should draft. They like Rudy Law. That's literally the only difference. And Rudy Law is just a pretty good fielder. Admittedly, Law's got a bit of a future on him. We don't think that future is very bright. And I trust my scouting directors. I'm going to take Tom Brookins. It's not an exciting pick. It's not a sexy pick. But it fills an area of need for us, which is an above average offensive, an above average third baseman who could also play a bit of shortstop in a pinch. It's not sexy by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it'll get the job done for this year. Um, Steve Nicosia. Yeah, it never hurts to have more catchers in your system. I'll take him. Um, Greg Johnstone can't hit. Orfield. He literally can't play baseball very well. Al Green. Um, Al Green is worth taking a flyer on. Uh, he's not going to be very expensive, and more importantly, he's got a lot of potential in the offense department. 
Rafael Santo Domingo, who has literally never played shortstop before. And he's kind of dumb. Let's take Pedro Hernandez, who's at least a very good fielder. Let's just take him out of the blue. Done. I have my choice between the Tom Chisholm and the Mike Maka. But they're both so terrible. How do I choose? I'll take Tom, I guess. There we go. The draft is over. Man, the top level talent of this draft is amazing. And none of it was for us. We didn't have a snowball's chance in hell. And I'm perfectly fine with that. We can build our team through trades, hopefully. We again did not draft a starting pitcher. And I'm starting to get a bit concerned about that. Because I know I've consistently said that virtually every single season. We need to get more young starting pitching. And I never require young starting pitching. But um, I'm sure that won't bite us in the ass. Everything's fine. I do plan to be active in the Rule 5 draft. If I can find a very talented player, I'm going to jump on him. And they're available all the time I get to pick. Which, let's be fair, is probably not very likely. Oh no. I lost. Pat Scanlon. Who can play third base well. And that's it. And Ed Herman. <gasps> Shit, Ed Herman. I just... God damn it. Ugh. You guys, I went three seasons or so without doing it, without forgetting to, without forgetting that I traded for someone and didn't put him on the forty man. Damn it! Oh, that was stupid. That was real dumb. Come on, let me drag the thing up. I could get Whitey Ford. 1978 Whitey Ford's not so great, though. I'm, I'm going to have to pass on that. All right. Cleon Jones, eh? Oh, God, he's terrible. Never mind. Bad. 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 You know what, Rick Dempsey? I'm going to take you. I choose you, Rick Dempsey. Welcome to the Milwaukee Brewers, where you will be the backup catcher and hopefully never see the light of day. <gasps> Ozzy Osbourne? I love Crazy Train. Oh, wait a minute. It's not that one. Yeah, that's fine. <sighs> I feel like such a dunce, though. I really think Ed Herman would have been a really talented player to have on our team as a catcher, and we blew it. That gives me a sad... But we just needed a backup catcher, so I'm not too fussed about it. All right. Now it's time to simulate up to... Erp. Spring training. Yeah, I'm going to wait till spring training, and then I'm going to see if there's anything there that I actually want to sign. But the answer is going to be no. Some poor fool is going to overpay for players that aren't very good. Uh, Brookins, I'm sending you straight to AAA. I legitimately don't remember you, Pedro Hernandez. You can go wherever, Hassan. Turns out Mickey Mantle did pretty good. Oh man, Mini Minoso didn't make it. That's a shame. Haha, ha, Bill Mazeroski. Everyone acknowledge that you suck. I hate you so much. Now, I want to prepare you guys. This is going to be a crash kind of season. I think this season could go very badly wrong for us. Because we've added some talent, but I don't think the talent that we've added is going to offset the fact 
that we're going to crater for certain players. Like, certain players are just going to shit the bed. And um, there's not much I can do about that. Uh, Brookins and Trout are both going to be spring training invitees. Um, two. Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm going to let Benedict keep developing. I'm not going to rush him to the majors this year. I think that's it, though. I think those are the only people I'm going to invite to spring training are those guys. That seems good. Let's roll that beautiful bean footage. I heard the dog from those commercials died recently. That's kind of sad, actually. I like Duke. Like, I thought the commercials were obnoxious, but I like the dog. Mm. Such is life, my friends. Such is life. Okay, well, that sucks. Um, he'll be back eventually. But for now, he's going to the injured list. Eh. I'm not super fussed about that, but it does it does kind of kick that trade in the junk, like, even one more time. We won 21 games in spring training, so maybe that's something good. But, uh, yeah. Player development. Uh, Trout got quite a bit better. Um, that's nice to see. Uh, Richard gets a bit worse. Redfern gets a bit better somehow, which is okay. Randy Jones is about the same. Hooten's a bit worse. Hargan's a bit better. Aquisto got better. Kane got better. That's exciting. Uh, Caldwell got a bit worse. Uh, Fisk, yeah, he's over 30. We're going to start seeing his ratings start to drop. He's a catcher. Um, I'm not surprised. He's getting worse at contact. Brookins gets better at second, better at power. Everything else is a tiny bit worse. Uh, Wallace got a little bit better. Rule got better. Okay. Let's set the roster. Um, I'm going to trade Hargan for a shortstop. Um, I think I've got just enough starting pitching depth that I feel comfortable doing this. I'll literally take anyone as long as they're a shortstop. Wow, okay. No, that's fair. Um, Steve Hargan is kind of shit. And yeah, he won't even be demoted anymore. Yep. I may have made a mistake with him. It's fine. Everything's fine. <sighs> Gotta keep Dempsey. Gotta keep Wagner. Alright. I really don't want Brookins to make the roster. I really want Brookins to get a year in, in the minors to season himself up a bit. So let's do that. How many hitters do I have? 13. So we're pretty much just getting rid of pitchers uh, this year. That's fine. Um, LaCour. You gone. What if I eat like half of Hargan's salary? I just don't want him on the team anymore. Did say I literally just didn't want him on the team anymore, but you know what? We'll take Tommy Matchick because Matchick's at least pretty good defensively. Done. Like, look, I'll take a look, but I'm pretty sure you're not going to offer me anything else. Like, you're not going to give me Mike Scott or Dave Patterson. If I asked real nice, you might give me Jeffrey Leonard, but I'm pretty sure you wouldn't. But we can try it. Yeah, you'd want a pretty top tier talent to get him. And I'm not I'm frankly not willing to do that, so sure. Tommy Matchick, welcome to the Milwaukee Brewers. I hope you have a lovely time. Um You going straight to the big leagues. 
Um, Wallace, easy decision. Down to the minors with you. And I'll instantly put you on the 40, man. All right. We have to get rid of five pitchers now. One. Two. I do want to keep Randy Jones. Uh, three. Four. How much more does Steve Trout have to learn in the minors? Really, he could get slightly better control. I'm going to go ahead and leave him in the minors, though, because I want him starting. I don't want him becoming a reliever. I want him starting every day uh, and building up some uh, some endurance. There we go. And then I just want to quickly scan and make sure that we didn't add anyone to the team that's not on the roster. We're good. I have a flaw and that I tend to overpay for mediocrity. I need to get better about that. I definitely have nobody in the top 100. I can say that almost without exception. Oh damn, Steve Trout and Benedict and Brookins. I'll be damned. I have a middle of the pack farm system. I frankly expected to be dead last. Whoa, look at this, uh, look at this, look at this system. Damn. Did no one draft Ricky Henderson? Because I refuse to believe Ricky Henderson doesn't crack a top 100 prospect. That's not a possible possibility. I bet no one signed him. I bet he wanted too much money. Let's take a look. Yeah, he failed to sign. Oh, and Toronto took him first overall? That was dumb, Toronto. Why did you not sign him? Could you just not have signed him? I don't know. I don't know. All right. So let's look at the team. We have a potentially... Why the fuck are you demoting Terry Forster? Over Tom Hume? I'll trust you for right now, but that seems pretty stupid to me. Um, there's Gary Matthews Sr. There's a lot of potential on this team. But a lot of this team is also going to be hugely unpredictable. Because so many players clearly hit better than we should have expected them to hit last year. So how we turn out this year is really anyone's guess. But there's only one way to find out. We delete Ricky Henderson's name from the search box, and then we click next month. And in case you haven't been following me very closely for a while, I just want to remind you guys, it's always a good idea to play one month of the season before you make any changes to the team. Oh, we got Pat Scanlon back. That kind of sucks for you, dude. Really? Nah, I, I'm just going to cut him. He's not very good. But yeah, I always recommend play through the first month of the season and then evaluate your team. Um, I've seen... I have a lot of friends who play the game. I've seen other people play the game. And a lot of them tend to freak out if things don't go well the first couple weeks of the season. You have to give them at least 100 at-bats uh, to really determine if a hitter is... To get any kind of sense of how they're going to trend this year. Um, damn, look at Steve Trout. He's like, bitch, put me in the majors. Three homers for Gamble. Kane gets a shutout. Um, Reggie Baldwin... Uh, had him is having himself a year in a ball. 
you know what? I'm going to promote you to double A. Why not? We have loads of room in the minors. All right. So let's look at the team so far. Gary Matthews isn't working out yet. But Chris Spire's almost hitting 400. So, early season baseball. Uh, we have one bad pitcher on the team, and that pitcher's name is Burt Blylevin. But our bullpen remains amazing. Um, I'm going to take a very quick peek at free agency. See if there's anyone I can grab from the bargain bin. Marv Rettenland, huh? I gotta admit, I'm at least a little bit tempted by Marv Rettenmund. Yes. I will give him this deal. I will give him a minor league deal. And if someone gets hurt, he can play some baseball for us. And we're just gonna go and jump into the next month. Here come the Yankees. We still got a reasonably good lead, though. And Rettman signed the contract. Welcome. Uh, you can go right to AAA. I think you can handle it. Another shout-out for Trout. Okay, Trout is definitely saying, I need to be in the majors now. It's hard to argue with that. Player development. Redfern got a bit worse. That's fine. He's been injured. It's understandable. Blylevin got better. I didn't expect that. Um, Matchick is a tiny bit better. Sizemore is still barely tolerable. Ayala's a bit better. Maddox is just better across the board, as is Gamble. Uh, Trout's getting better. A bit of improvement in the back end of the minors, too. All right, now how do things work? Look. Uh, Matthew Sr. still isn't hitting that well, but Chris Spire is. Um... I did say Fisk would be worse. I was right. I said Gamble would be worse. I was wrong. Uh, Gamble is actually turning in virtually the same season as last season so far. Uh, I said Poole would be better. He's not. I said Gross would be worse. He's not. Literally everything I said about last season has turned out to be a lie. I said Maddox would be better. He's the same. I said Sizemore would get worse. He didn't. And I said Bell would probably be at least reasonably decent, and he's not. So, yeah. Um. All right. I also said John D'Aquisto would be amazing his entire career, and I was clearly wrong about that, too. Okay. So. Two things I want to do at this point in the season. First of all, let's check our personnel. Let's re-sign all the minor leaguers. Just all of them. Our pitching coach. How do you get along with our current team? Eh. You know what? Our pitching's been really great the last few years. I don't see why I wouldn't reward you with a new contract. Done. And let's try to bring back Brad Garcia because he seems like he's a good and... Uh, really, you're going to do this shit again where I randomly can't click on bits in the screen? There we go. Done. That's good. 
Um, that's one last thing I'm going to take. I hopefully will get re-signed, but maybe I won't. I mean, we're up to 35 and 17, and it's not even the All-Star break yet. Now. I think we promote Brookins. I think we do. Because... Um, first of all, Brookins is a 49 defensively. Bell is 40. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to demote Bell and promote Brookins. I'll try to make third base a bit better. I always hit pretty great when they give him a chance. <clears throat> Gary Matthews Sr. is really struggling. Would he take a demotion to AAA to try to sort himself out? Because I'd like to give Rettman a chance, actually. I think that's what I'm going to do. Will you take a demotion, Matthews? You will. Let's let you work on your swing for a bit. I'm going to call up Rettman. Let's see how he handles it. Yeah, this is fine. I've got so many relievers. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try to trade some of them. Um, here we go, LaCour. I've never kept him from the majors for a long time. Maybe he deserves a shot. I want some middle infielders. And no veterans. I would take a regular prospect, but no veterans. I'm not going to pay into it. No. 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 Never mind. I guess I will throw in veterans and see if I get any better offers, but... Nah, it's all shit. Okay. I tried. Let's advance to July. <laughs> okay. Awesome. <clears throat> Pete Redfern. If you would be so kind, please go rehab in the minors. Thanks, mate. Uh, let's see how you actually play before I decide if I'm going to keep you or not. Three homers for Bell and the Miners. Trout is really impressing in the minors this year. Like, holy shit, he's been great. Damn. Okay. So we tried Mar Rettmond. He ain't working out so well. How is Gary's swing in the minors? He's hitting a lot better in the minors. Um, okay, we tried Marv. Um, you suck. Cheeky sod. Why will you not ever play Ayala? What is it about him that you find personally objectionable? I could just force you to play Ayala as DH and see what happens. Like, the dude's got power potential, and he's got good gap power, he gets on base. Why are we not giving him a shot, manager? Screw it. You know what, Ayala, I'm designated you the DH for the rest of the year. Stop playing Marv Rutmond. Um...
So the top of the order is pretty decent, and then Redmond was just absolute shit. And then we get better, and then it's down to Brookins. Look, Brookins only has 100 at-bats in the majors. It's way too soon to decide that he can't handle it. Let's let him play a bit longer. We could always promote Bell again at the trading deadline if we need to. Okay, we just lost Ted Sizemore. So instead, I'm going to promote Bell now, and then I'll let you, the two of you decide who plays second among the two of you. That's unfortunate. Um, yeah, sure. I will happily re-sign him, even though I genuinely don't want him back. But I gotta make the owner happy. Uh, dude, we're still in first place. We won 14 more games than we've lost. I think you need to take it down a notch. Dick freaking Bainey is just, holy shit. Or Steve Trout, rather. Can I demote Blylevin? No, he wouldn't accept it. That's a shame. And his contract is still so damn long. You know what? I'm going to trade Bert Blylevin. And it pains my soul to do this. But I think we have to. Oh, damn. You literally don't like him very much, do you? Wow. I mean, to be fair, there's very little reason to trust Burt Blylevin at this point. You know what? I will take even this shitty deal. You know what? What if I eat 25% ha uh, of his salary? Does the return get any better? I could get Jim Wolford. You know, I would do it for Dave Wehrmeister. I also don't... I don't dislike Jim Wolford. But... I don't really have a spot for him right now. So I will actually go ahead and grab a Wehrmeister. What if I eat none of his salad? I have to at least 10% of his salary. You know what? That's fair. Done. Um, now, the question is, do we promote Pete Redfern or do we give Steve Trout a shot? I'm going to give Steve Trout a shot. I firmly believe in players having great years, getting a chance to excel. And he's just been lighting up AAA. So you know what, Steve? You're my dude. Welcome to the majors. Have fun. He can't be worse than Blylevin. So, I mean... Oof. But true. We really do need Sizemore back. Um... Oh, damn. John Aquisto is just cratered. What the hell happened? Something should have, like, plummeted. Yeah, I get his potentials plummeted, but what's gotten worse? Oh, his control has slipped. Like, a lot. Oof. That explains it. Okay. And I just signed him to a new deal because I was so sure... You know what? Ignore everything I've ever told you, because clearly I don't know what I'm talking about. Can I get someone to give me something for Rettenmund? Like, anything for Rettenmund. This is pretty hilarious. I'm getting a much bigger list of choices for someone I basically paid no money for. Hmm. <clears throat> 
I don't really need another pitcher or reliever, but thanks for offering. Okay. A lot of pitchers being offered. Which is fine. I do like me a good pitcher every now and again. I could get future manager of the Oakland A's, Ken Maka. Mickey Rivers. He still has some talent on him, but I don't frankly know where we'd play him. Unless we just like bench Terry Puel, maybe. I could use a quality backup second baseman. What do we got? Cash can defend but can't hit. Green is a little bit worse at both. Yeah, we're getting a lot of names, but so far nobody that I'm leaping out as is saying, yes, this person needs to be with our team and yesterday. I do quite like Larry Dierker, actually. Um, but I don't really have room for him. Andre Thornton. Andre Thornton? Andre Thornton. I'd be buying low on him, which is great. He'd be a fairly decent DH, but he has had some issues hitting the last couple years. Maybe that's not the best choice. You know what? Let's start with infielders only. I know I'm mostly going to get first baseman. I'm I'm accepting that. Okay. I could get Dick Allen. And there's a lot to be said for adding Dick Allen to this team as a DH. Like, he's not the contact hitter he used to be, but his power is still there, and his discipline is still there. And just last year, he hit 300. And next year's a vesting option? Whoa. I get that we're trading one old guy for an even older guy. Salida wouldn't be a bad choice either. Or Tony Horton. No, I like the idea of adding Dick Allen, though. I really, truly do. Let's do it. Yeah. God damn it, really? Why does this do this? Why do you do this, OTP? You just randomly decide that certain buttons aren't clickable. There we go. Would you throw in a reliever like Don Aussie? You keep wanting to get rid of the guy. Let's see if you'll take it. Nope, you don't like the deal. You want a catcher with absolutely no future. Done. Yeah, I know Dick Allen was always considered kind of a red ass um, in real life, but that's fine. I'll promote you to the Major League roster. I'll put you on the 40-man and then send you to AAA, my friend. And now, um, since Ayala hasn't set the world on fire, I'm going to go ahead and take him off of Force as Death's data hitter and just let the AI decide. Because they're probably going to pick Dick Allen, and I'm curious to see how Allen does. Um, I'm very curious to see if he can manage to get us a spark of life. Um, no. Just please stop.
I believe you are high on one or more hallucinogenic drugs, if you think I want that. All right, Wolf is trash. Cruise is interesting, but still not very good. And you're wanting one of my best pitchers. And apparently my GM thinks this is an amazing deal, but why? Like, I get that we suck at second base, but surely I could get someone of this caliber for a lot less than this. I'm not saying these aren't useful players that I wouldn't want to add. I'm saying, why am I giving up Burt Hooten for it? I'm going to drop Hooten. And ask what you would want instead. Now you won't even take Hooten. You know what? No. I know my GM loves it, but I'm going to have to say no to it. See? And he just got a shutout. If I would have traded him, no shutout. Clearly made the right call. Uh, nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. Carlton Fisk and Wayne Gross and Oscar Gamble are your... Wow, we didn't... They didn't have very many relievers. Huh. Yeah, all right, you guys. I was wrong about Gamble, Gross, and Fisk. They're all having very good years. I was a little bit right about Gross. He's tailing off a little bit from last year. Um, But Fisk is, is having another outstanding season. So congrats to him. And we'll go up to the trading deadline to decide if there's anyone else we want to trade. A trade for... Ooh, Oscar Gamble is on All-Star Game. MVP, nice. Okay. Ken McMullen is at least an interesting third baseman. He's certainly better than Kevin Bell. But I don't want to give up Pete Fredfern. What if I drop Redfern? Wait, really? I'm going to basically get a flat upgrade. Why? Um, yes, please. Upgrade. Why would I not have taken that deal? I don't know, guys. But, uh, yeah. Ken McMullen. Bam. You can fill in a third base for the rest of the year. Bill Melton is a good hitter, but I don't really need that. So, no. Like how literally everyone that has a spare third baseman is knocking on my door. All right. I do not want to lose Pete Redfern. And how's Steve Trout's time in the majors going? He's been okay. So I'm going to demote Aquisto if you call up Redfern. We have an unknown pitcher. We sure got 15 people. That's pretty great. Um, Al Green, you're having an exceptional year in the Rookie League. So take a promotion to Class A. Uh, Ken McMullen would like to come back. Nope, not interested. He's being semi-productive. 
Well, how much money do you even want to come back? You want 150 grand. Let's decide if you're worth it first. Another trade proposal. No. Just stop offering me like objectively bad deals. Now, quick look at the home screen. Um, mm. Dick Allen's not really working out either, is he? Is it time to bring Gary Matthews back? How's he enjoying AAA? He's outright dominating in AAA. I think he's earned a promotion back to the main roster. Um, and we are a bit short on outfielders, too. Send down Wagner. And we'll bring up Matthews back up. Maybe now he's ready to handle the crushing burden that is apparently playing DH for the Milwaukee Brewers. We do have a five-game lead, but that could easily disappear. Um, player development. So far, there's not a lot to be excited about. Dempsey got a little better. Uh, Brookins is a little bit better at second. That's good to see. I think we really need size more back. I think that's the most important thing that we can manage is getting size more back. Um... Oh yeah, why on earth are you not in AAA, Dave? Sorry, you should have been AAA the whole time. My bad. Um, do you have anyone whose contract is getting ready to run out that we definitely want to resign? Maybe Forrester. But the thing is, he's no longer the megastar that he was in the past. He's still very, very good. So maybe it is actually worth bringing him back. How much do you want to come back, Mr. Forster? A pretty reasonable salary. I'll do it. That's fine. I really hope Gamble doesn't opt out now. <clears throat> If I were Oscar Gamble's agent, I would be screaming at him, decline to take the option, because he'd probably get a pretty big raise. But, um, yeah. We'll see what happens, you guys. We shall see what happens. Um... I'm going to wait before I decide if I'm going to bring back McMullen. And the fans booch their pants over bringing Forrester back. <clears throat> you know, he's not the closer anymore. I think he's still very talented, so... Come on, guys. We got this. Good. Um, I'm going to give you a very short rehab assignment because I'm going to promote you when the rosters expand. There you go. Rosters expanded. Welcome back, Tom. Ted. Tom is the actor. What the hell's wrong with me? Sorry. Um, oh, damn, a cycle for Terry Poole. Nice.
Like, he's doing what I want a leadoff hitter to do. Even if he's not hitting at, like, max potential, he's still pretty solid. I can't really say I have any complaints about Terry Poole. Um, we could probably get better at left field. But I have no reason to doubt he won't be productive for at least another couple of years. And I will happily just go ahead and instantly give you your one-year deal. Um, done. Got six hits in that game, too. That's pretty great. Um, Al Green is not that great a hitter, so we're going to give him some time. Uh, Scott Meyer is marginally better this year. Let's let him flame out in short season ball. You would like to come back, Matt Chick. Do I want to bring you back is the more important question. You're a decent infielder who can't hit your way out of a paper bag. That has relatively marginal... Uh, no, I'm not bringing him back. No, I can do better. Personal message. Pool comes back. As I suspected he would. Well, hey, that's what backups are for, right? Poor Dick Allen. Um, I'm not going to replace him because, frankly, I don't know who I'd replace him with. I could call up Wallace, actually. Let's do that. Get another outfielder going on. God damn it, Ted. And we did it. We clinched the playoffs. Well done, us. You know what? I said I thought we'd win about 90 games this year. It turns out I was right. So despite all of my other predictions being wrong, I was right when it mattered. Um, so yeah. Good stuff. Player development. I'm only marginally interested in this right now, to be honest with you. We do have to set our playoff roster. And that's actually going to be a little bit more important. You know, one thing you guys had mentioned that worked last year that I forgot to do this year. I didn't call up a bunch of pitchers um, for 40-man call-ups. Um, you know what? Let's, let's review the team. Let's actually, let's. Why are we still not at playoffs begin? We still have one more game to play. There we go. Now we're there. Um. Right. Let's just. Let's bask in the glory of this team. And Oscar Gable being almost as awesome. Actually, better this year than he was last year. We had no right to expect this, and yet that's exactly what we got. I mean, the difference is fairly minor. He hit a few more singles this year. But his average was higher. Congratulations to Oscar Gamble. Uh, Carlton Fisk, again, turned in almost the exact same season. A bit fewer homers, a bit more doubles. And that could be the sign of an aging player. Um, he's not hitting the ball quite as hard as he used to hit. But he's still amazing. Chris Spire. What's left to say about him? He hits well enough to carry his glove. Uh, Elliot Maddox. Finally. Finally. We get something remotely close to what we paid for. I ended up being right about that too. Damn. How come you were so effective this year? Oh, look at his ability to steal bases. That was good stuff. 
I was right about Gross taking a bit of a step back, but I also thought I'd be happy with 1977, and that's basically what he gave us. Few, a few less homers, few more doubles. Other than that, basically 77 again. I said Poole would continue to contribute, which he has. Um, there's a lot to be said for upgrading at left field at some point, but I'm honestly happy with him to this moment. Uh, Gary Matthews Sr. Uh, eventually recovered and ended up turning in a pretty good season for us. Um, hopefully he can continue that there. Ayala had a good year. McMullen, not so much. Uh, he was acceptable. Right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our playoff roster. First and most important decision. If you think I'm not putting Todd Ted Sizemore on the playoff roster, you're delusional. It's as simple as that. Even injured, I want him to be ready to come back when we need him. And then I guess I'll go ahead and put Pete Redfern on there too. Speaking of Pete Redford, how'd our pitching staff do this year? Not nearly as amazing, um, but Les Kane has made a nice little comeback after missing the in most of last year. He basically hasn't lost a step, which is great. Uh, J.R. Richard, maybe not quite as good this year as he was last year. Um, strikeouts dropped, homers went up, got hit a lot more. But still, again, in line with his past career, leading maybe just 1970, just one of those years. Geisel had a great year. Hume had a great year. Caldwell continues to Caldwell. Um, he's probably the next guy that we probably want to try to trade in the offseason. Um, you know, Steve Trout didn't get a lot of pitching time in the majors, but what we've seen so far is a bit encouraging. I kept the ball down. Uh, strikeouts weren't there yet, but he'll get there. He's always going to be kind of a fringy prospect, so we'll see if he can uh, if he can step forward a bit. And Randy Jones ended up not being the best addition, but he also cost us eighty grand, so I'm not that fussed by it. We spent eighty thousand dollars and didn't get very much. Hey, sometimes you buy a dollar lottery ticket, you win a hundred bucks. Sometimes you win nothing. In this case, we won nothing. I have no issues with that. Let's go to the playoff. We were not that great this year, especially pitching-wise. So this could be a very short trip to the postseason wars, but let's find out. J.R. Richard versus Steve Carlton, and we win. Nice work, J.R. What kind of stat line do you have that? Mmm, that's tasty. Three hits, six Ks, two walks. Steve Carlton was awesome. But we were just a little bit better today. Nice work, guys. Burt Hooten versus Bill Parsons. Uh, Burt Hooten doesn't really give a hoot, apparently. I'm noticing an ugly trend, though. But we'll find out. Uh, another homer for Gamble, but it doesn't matter because Campbell... Wait, who's... Oh, Really? We coughed it up at the end of the game? Yeah, we sure did. A perfectly fine game from Kane, and then Hume just imploded. Well, that's not good. Damn it. And again, our offense wasn't really here, but then again, theirs wasn't either. This has been an issue for us two years in a row now, and I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to make us stop, like, burning out and not being able to hit when the playoffs start. Because we got good performances from certain players, and other players just didn't hit. Look at Carlton Fisk. 
he did nothing of any value during the season. Or series, rather. So, I mean, to be honest, Chicago was a lot better than us. Um, especially in pitching. And they kind of proved it. We had one really good game, and then the rest of the games were kind of meh. We were in it every single game, though. The only game we got lit up was uh, Bert Hooten. Just got clobbered. But, um, a bit of a disappointment. And who ended up winning the World Series? Uh, Pete and Tommy Matchek's gonna retire. That's fine. Most importantly, did I get a new contract? Or did I get fired? Why Dick Allen didn't retire? I did get extended, but you only gave me another one-year deal. I expected this. We're going to get a new budget of about $9 million. Okay. So, this season didn't work out perfectly. But we did still have a very good season. And I think at least that part of it we can maintain year in and year out. What we don't have is that extra oomph. We can't get over the hump when we get to the playoffs. And I think what we need to do is we need to start focusing a bit more on depth. And as much as I love Terry Poole, I think maybe we need to upgrade at left field too. Um, the first thing we're going to do next episode is to leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger. Decide about Oscar Gamble. Oscar Gamble had two amazing back-to-back -back seasons. But he's going to want to get paid a lot of money. And we need to decide whether he's worth it. So for now, though, I want to thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you continue to follow the series. Uh, obviously, this is a bit taller task than winning the World Series with uh, the Senators was. But I have hope that we can manage it. So until then, though, this has been Avindian. Thank you for watching, and I bid you good day.